Sunny Hostin, Joy Behar, Sarah Haynes, and Jedediah Vila. Now, let's get things started. Put the champagne down. <laughs> Let us start this show. You'll be drinking later on. <laughs> Michael Flynn is not feeling the love this morning. He cannot feel the love. He resigned as national security advisor three weeks after the Justice Department <laughs> warned the White House mm -hmm. that he could be vulnerable to blackmail for talking about sanctions with a Russian ambassador. Three weeks ago, mm -hmm. they said, get him out of there. Nobody listened. Mm -hmm. they but fired here's... Him. They what, fired her. Well, but for, they, after they, three they weeks, fired yes, yes. They, they fired, fired her. Yeah. yeah. The person who said, don't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's what, you know, he said about it on Friday. <laughs> And he what, who shall be nameless. Yeah. <laughs> and what Kelly and Conway said just yesterday. Take a look. What do you make the reports um, that General Flynn had conversations with the Russians about sanctions before you were sworn in? I don't know about it. I haven't seen it. General Flynn does enjoy the full confidence of the president, and this is a big week for General Flynn. Hmm. Yeah, it's a big week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this morning, Kelly Ann was all over the place claiming she's not sure when. You know, the guy was notified of this conflict, and right before we went on air, he tweeted, the real story here is why are there so many illegal leaks coming out of Washington? Will these leaks be happening as ideal or North Dakota? <laughs> North Korea. North Dakota. <laughs> yeah. I just was being for North Korea. I mean, is he really, is he dodging the real question here? I mean, of course, yeah, I mean, of course. remember this guy is yeah. the same guy that started the chant Lakara. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Michael this, Flynn? Yes. Yeah, Michael Flynn yeah. started this. And he said that and Hillary is a national security threat. Yes, and he also... <laughs> now he is. And Obama fired him. Yeah. That's what's fired interesting him. to me. Obama fired him because he was insubordinate, because he failed to follow guidance of his superiors. And so they were on notice that this guy was rogue, that this guy didn't follow... Um, you know, protocol. And so why would you put him in charge of national security? Because he's in bed well, he with the Russians, just like Donald Trump is. is. That's why. First of all, it has to be. Yeah. Insubordination is really rare in the military because it's all it's all based on rank and file. But one thing he used as an excuse was he used quote the fast pace of events. That's why he might have forgotten things. This is someone that's been in war zones. Forgot to tell people about. Fl Flynn said that the fast pace of events was why he maybe left out the sanctions conversation with Russia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so here's a military. <laughs> he, I mean, he's he's. In war zones, like yeah. fast pace is not a good excuse for you. You might, you, maybe you weren't. But I love when, when you, the yeah. shot you just showed about Donald saying, well, "I don't know, I don't know anything about yeah. it." I thought he knew more than the generals. He knows everything yeah. else. Right? Yeah. Suddenly, yeah. geez, he, what could it be? Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no way that he didn't know about it because it wasn't just right. that warns. It was James Clapper. It was John Brennan. Yeah. He's been talking about director of national intelligence, CIA director. Everyone went and said, "Look, this could potentially compromise our national That's security right. because this guy may." potentially get bribed and then That's what right. happens now Kellyanne yeah. Conway has a responsibility to be informed this is falling on the heels of her having that huge controversy promoting Ivanka's line now mm -hmm. she's out there talking about well I didn't know no you it's your job to know and it's Donald Trump's job to know if there is someone in your administration that could potentially jeopardize our national security that becomes our problem and it's your job to protect That's that right. is your number they, one they job. Must have not, so, so you're saying they knew so if they knew they that knew. Flynn is just the but bad. Also no, bad. no, 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 no. When, when you don't 
vet your people correctly. When you put them in to piss people off, and you know, the, President Bannon Obama. did that. Yes. President, yeah. Bannon. President Bannon, you know, because he's been trying to get him out of there for a long time, and supposedly President Bannon said, you know, here's your walking papers, get out. Because when you're not, if, if you were the president, <laughs> you wouldn't know what was going on because yeah. this is your right but since these are not his picks yeah. these are people picked for him yeah. by president bannon so you think president bannon knew oh hell, hell yeah, yeah. He knew. so hell yeah, he the question knew. the question then really remains did the russians hand the presidency to Donald yes Trump? So that's the other okay. question so I, question. I say it again i've said it before do it over again. <laughs> Just do the whole election over. It's not a fair election. It didn't really, it was not correct. Well, Let's yeah. do it again. The, the other issue is why was he, what was that conversation? If he was speaking about sanctions, those sanctions were imposed because President Obama election. was saying there are consequences if you're meddling in our election. Yes. So what was that conversation between Flynn and the ambassador involving our election? Was, and don't worry sanctions. about the That's sanctions. Very, That's very, very alarming. That's, That's, what, yeah. it was. Very That's what it was. That's what it was. Mike Pence didn't know. They threw him under the bus because he was out there defending Flynn. It's horrible. I, bl I think they. I'm. So, I'm. I believe they're all complicit. Yes. I don't I think, think Mike Pence. I, I, I believe. Well, I, I don't. Because when you are being told, when you don't, when you're the vice president, and you see that this person is not a smart choice, when you see all the, he's in subordination to the threat, You can't sanction that. Yeah. So he went along with it. And I say this to all those Republicans, this is all on you guys. That's because right. you rushing all these people yeah. through, you don't care, it's going to come back and bite y'all in yeah. the keystone. Well, they don't care because while all this is going on, Paul Ryan and the rest of them are slipping through their their reactionary agenda to unload, to over overturn Obamacare, mm -hmm. to, 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 to sneak their little two cents into Medicare, yeah. to get rid of all of this, of the safety control. nets yes. and environmental controls, all the things that they want to do yeah you know I mean they could create jobs tomorrow if they just had an infrastructure bill just I put the money that Republicans don't care I think a lot of Republicans well, they, care they very deeply oh, about really? what he's well doing. then why don't they I open do. their mouth yeah. Yeah. I, I can't I, why why don't they Mike, Mike Pence mouth. is out there in full shame right now but saying Pence, you had you a responsibility he knew better yeah. he knew he listen, knew, he had he the knew better signs. and all of them knew they all said no we're not gonna go along with this and then they all came why are we hearing any of the Republicans coming out and saying this is wrong they're all taking their wives uh, for a brunch for <laughs> Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. We'll be right back. No, that's what we heard. We'll be right back. Still ahead, Bachelorette Bombshell. Will the first black bachelorette in the history of the show be a game changer? The hottest topics. And just look who's firing things up this week. Bob Odenkirk, Ice Cube. And get this, Guy Day Friday is back. Just wait till you see the guys that we have lined up for you on Friday. Because Friday, we're laughing with the hilarious Trevor Noah. TGIF. Hey, everyone's coming to The View. And next Tuesday, our political view is sizzling. When Senator Chuck Schumer hits the table. Wait for that one. Told ya. That's what we do. We're serving things up hot on The View all February. set up in honor of Valentine's Day and they'll be checking back throughout the show. Kiss cam. That's great. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> no tongues. Uh, you know, it's Fashion Week in New York, so today's Black History Month, FYI, honors a woman who helped define modern style. Ann Lowe was America's first black high fashion designer from the 1920s to the 1960s. She was the go-to stylist for America's, America's elite, from the Rockefellers to the DuPonts. She designed that iconic gown for Jacqueline Bouvier oh, when she married John gorgeous. F. Kennedy. And you can see some of her work at the Smithsonian National Museum of African History. And this might be one of the first times people have seen a picture of her and realized that that was a black woman who designed all that those gorgeous things. Dress. So chic. So chic. Yeah. 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 But interestingly, you never saw, you know, you didn't see it. So that's why we have Black History Month. Yeah. All 28 days of it. <laughs> it is the shortest month. Yeah, it's kind of a period. Anyway, we have some suggestions for Flynn's replacement. Remember we were talking about Mr. Flynn? And uh, that I think President Bannon would approve of. Yeah, uh, like, 
Negan from The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. King Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Oh. <laughs> and Voldemort from Harry Potter. <laughs> Well, the, the thing that's interesting about replacing him is they're thinking of putting General Petraeus in there. Oh, now, General on. Petraeus famously told uh, state secrets to his it's mistress awkward. in bed, like pillow talk. He was convicted of a misdemeanor. Exactly. So, I mean, it's like putting Linda Tripp in. You know what I mean? I the guy's got a big mouth. You know, this, this drives me crazy. Republicans drive me crazy because I want to be too. really excited about a free market agenda. I want to be excited about all the policy stuff, and I can't because they're too busy doing this nonsense. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about Trump and, and his ridiculous hires and not vetting people and it's unfortunate because Republicans this was your time to do something you talked about Obamacare for a long time you didn't like it this was your time to create alternatives and give people some hope well, you know, people have if, he you just they shown, want a job. if he had just what shown his this? tax returns this would not be an issue he wouldn't have gotten wouldn't elected. Have elected it just makes me so what mad this audit lasting until, uh, you know, he's we'll never going to show we'll those. never see them. You're never well, going to see I'm them. Well, I'm sorry. If them. I lost $900 billion, you wouldn't show me either? <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. No. Because that shows that I'm not a good business person. That's one And when reason. somebody says, you know, I'm smart for not paying my taxes, when I know that there are soldiers who are out there who need things who there are people out there who are busting their keys to pay their taxes no that's the, to me that's not a presidential thing to do but you know y'all wanted him but you, you know, got him me, when yeah. when when that came out mm -hmm. all of the trump supporters mm -hmm. they overlooked it and they felt like gee isn't he smart smart yeah, that he could get away yeah. with yeah i mean instead of people thinking of their own interests they're saying isn't he smart that doesn't make and sense it's, it's remarkable that he ran on this i'm a, such a great business person um platform because i interviewed a lot of people in atlantic city that lost their jobs yeah. and lost their lives really because of trump 900 million 900 million, almost, a billion almost yeah. a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, I think that anybody who voted for him was voting, I think that they just saw a personality of some sort. No, I think it's like of, the cult of personality. No, I, I think, though, I think a lot of people here. were struggling and they were they were desperate for that. When you can't put food on the table, when you're working two and three jobs, when your health insurance premiums go up, whoever is there promising you a better future, I get and you know, the appeal. Was, not their you know who that was? That was Bernie Sanders. Well, he actually yeah. was and, able and, to but he wasn't, he wasn't there. Yeah, he wasn't yeah, there. And also, you know what? I know, I know nobody wants to hear this, but I remember the days when uh, President Bush, what life was like when he left. Which one? I remember oh, the, the uh, Bush too. W. You know, um, right? Yeah, Bush, Bush yeah, too. W. Yeah. W. I don't know. You know, w. L M N P. <laughs> uh, but you know, he didn't leave us in good standing. No. He did not leave us in no. good standing. You were hungrier. You were hungrier. You really didn't have a job then. You, you had nothing. And this guy came in, was told, we're not going to do anything to help anything. And you know what? In spite of all those people not doing anything, yeah. you got health care. You're talking about Obama. I'm talking yeah. about Obama. Right. Yeah. A lot of things came about that he did. And you know why he did them? Because they wouldn't help. So when I hear people say, you know, it's so bad, I know you're praying. When, you, when people say it was so bad, it was so bad, I'm going to take you back and remind you what life was like eight years prior to that. Because it wasn't as good as it could have been. We'll be right back. <laughs> anyway, you know, a year after Playboy made their historic announcement <laughs> that they were no longer featuring nude women, they announced yesterday they're bringing the nude women back. <laughs> and, I mean, did they actually think people just read it for the articles? The articles, yeah. The just went yeah. way down. That's well, you know, we... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's like the AARP magazine without old people. <laughs> You know, we have a sneak. Pre we have a sneak preview. Oh. Yeah, please bring it up. I think these are going to sell really well. Because it's like, first of all, that's not my hair. You know? I 
mean, and you know, those, that used to be my top at birth. <laughs> So that's what we think the new one is going to look like. Oh, anyway, you know, after 33 seasons, there will finally be, now sit down, take a deep breath, everybody. <laughs> there will finally be a black bachelorette. Oh. <laughs> Rachel Lindsay announced it on Jimmy Kimmel. So pretty. Mm -hmm. She's uh, still on this season of The Bachelor, but uh, I guess she didn't win this, and that's why she's going after it now. Yeah. Do you think that there'll be an issue? I don't know. How many years did that take? 33 seasons. 33 I don't seasons. I don't know I don't what that How many years in a year? Wow. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting. I think people will respond to it. And she's an attorney. Did you Ooh. know that? She's an attorney. So she's, I, I think Why it's going to be interesting. Important? <laughs> it's very important. Why? Ruby. Because she's an attorney. She'll, it, she'll be very discerning. She'll be cross-examining people. She'll uh -oh. be yeah, uh -oh. getting to the, the juice of you've things. Never watched this show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, some people said that, that they didn't think people would watch it, but you know, Why? It's a girl. I, I think for because they were trying uh, to make it seem like Hill. we were not as interesting. You just quoted one of my favorite movies. Isn't it Notting Hill? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just a girl, girl here. standing in front, in front of a boy, boy. telling him, to, or to asking, him, him, to asking him to love me. Yes. It's amazing in a way how slowly the wheels of progress <laughs> turn off. I mean, this is taking all these years. How many yeah. years do we... There was a time when it was miscegenation, they called it, when, yeah. you met, when a black person married a white person. It was against the law. Yeah. Yeah. There's this Until movie, 57. Loving. Yeah. Go see this movie, yeah. Loving, yeah. Loving, which is a Supreme Court yeah. case that changed that. I mean, it's not that long ago. No. Listen, we only got the, the full vote in the United States yeah. in 68 also. Yeah. Yeah. My parents always you remind know. me that they couldn't have gotten married. I was born That's in 68. Right. They couldn't have gotten married unless... And now we have the Ku Klux Klan behind the uh, administration. Hmm. Well, well, gee. <laughs> No, I mean, the, uh, David Duke endorsed uh, Trump when he won, yeah. when he was inaugurated. It was the happiest day of their lives. I was the happy when we plan. started the show. Oh, yeah. Trump, Trump, Trump yeah. disavowed you know and said, what? I do not want You him. know what I say to all those We're people? We're going. That's for that now. Hey, everyone, coming up next is the Pete. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. You got a little short though. Is that sexy? Very sexy. I say Well, that was another couple showing some love on our Valentine's Day kiss cam. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, I really love it. <laughs> our next guests have been happily married for almost 22 years. Wow. And... As millions of viewers of the hit reality series For Pete's Sake already know, they're kind of fabulous. <laughs> Please welcome Holly Robinson and Rodney Pete. Yeah. So earlier we were talking, <coughs> talking we're, about, <coughs> we're both doing this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You and I are both in our little sexy Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, so we were talking about uh, the Playboy bunnies. And yeah. That yeah. Playboy is going back. But I think people forget that uh, what Playboy actually did for a lot of performers. Yeah, no, well, you said it. It, it was the first late night oh, show. You something on you, baby. Oh, thanks, See, baby. See, years. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, that had, you know, interracial people that's that right. were, were a part of it. So that's it was right. amazing. It was yeah. a stunning place. I tried to tell yes. her that when I used to go all the time. She didn't. Well, because the reputation was that it was no, wild no. and crazy. Well, that was pre Holly. You did not go when I knew you. Uh, right? Uh, or no. did you? No. <laughs> no, I did not. I have no. never driven past it. I have never seen it. I have no, no. idea where it is. But I remember that scene in your mom's Mabley yeah. um, documentary, documentary yeah. where she was singing. At the, at the at the Playboy, Playboy Mansion with yeah. Hugh Hefner, and it was like tears. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, he was extraordinary. I mean, yeah. he did a lot of amazing stuff, and he got quite a bit of hell for, yeah. you know, yeah. showing 
black people and white people and Asian people just all hanging out. Yeah. So, you know, good on them. They're still hanging around. Yeah. Okay, now you guys have been married, as we just mentioned, for 22 years, yes. right? I've been going for about two. <laughs> and you've got two decades on us. Yeah, let's not forget that half. <laughs> Any advice on how you guys keep it alive, well, keep it spicy? <clears throat> I call it same page love. In other words, you got to be on the same page. If you're not on the same page, then you just go, you veer off and you're not in the same, you know, zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you aren't there. So that's what I think. Right? What about you, honey? Yeah. Same page is absolutely essential, but you also have to compromise. Right, mm. and, and there's got to be, a, the gotta be a lot of compromise in, in that. And, but you're thinking about the bigger picture. Mm. People so. say marriage is 50-50, but it's really a hundred, a hundred. Yeah, you know, oh, you I gotta have a hundred. That is a good word. Yeah, I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow that advice. I love that. Well, the second season of your show, For Pete's Sake, yeah. is about to start, and it features your entire family. Aww. What are the Pete's up to these days? Well. <clears throat> The Pete's are changing, transitioning. We have a daughter who went to college. Our son with autism, who people said would never, not people, a pediatrician said would never do anything, uh, is now driving and has a job, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, and I, and I think last year, last season, it was a lot of new, you know, things for us. Mm -hmm. And this year has been really a, a lot of transitioning. Holly said it. our daughter's going to school here in New York now, so um, our younger son is not the baby anymore. Yeah. Holly doesn't make him talk baby talk anymore <laughs> now. Um, and again, our son, who's uh, RJ, who's 19, is now yeah. transitioning in a lot of ways. He's got a job with the L.A. Dodgers. Love I mean, that's amazing. amazing. Well, yeah, let's it's cool about, stuff. Let's talk it's about cool. this because, yeah. as you know, one of the things that that we see more and more is, you know, young black men driving, you know, getting pulled over and stuff. Now, your son is a special boy. Yeah. Scared so, me to death. I, I mean, know. I know. So what, me tell me what you've been doing. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're so worried about, you know, we work so hard to get this kid to be independent, and then now he's independent. I don't want to let him out the house. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, so, so especially with driving, if he gets pulled over, we brought cops to the house, and we walked him through how to comply, what to do, because he's a quirky kid with autism. He has, he shakes, he flaps, he does yeah. things. Yeah. You know, he, he might have a sudden motion, and I'm not trying to have him be you know, a trending hashtag one day, you know? So... So what I really wanted to do, what we wanted to do was talk more about law enforcement and the police community mm -hmm. bringing autism together yes. um, and understanding, you know, how to recognize these kids in the community. Do you think that, that there's enough, uh, that, the, that people realize that because, uh, and this is for black kids or white yeah. kids, because this, you know, a sudden movement or yeah. what looks like attitude to people yeah. is something totally different. Mm -hmm. do you, it, should we be gathering the autistic community together and saying this is potentially yeah. a huge issue for yeah. all of us? Yeah. It's, it's, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, all I said, our, our, our son has no filter, right? So he'll just yeah. go. He likes to have his headphones on. He likes yeah. to run. Wear his hoodie. Um, he wears his hoodie. He likes to do things. And if somebody approaches him, mm -hmm. it could be a police officer or anyone, mm -hmm. he's going to shy away, run away, do something right. you don't know. And that may be, you know, construed as... He's attacking me, or he's right. a threat. Right. Yeah, I think there's, it's a training issue, though, yeah. right? Yeah. With, with police uh, departments. Absolutely. If law enforcement has more autism training, they know how to recognize it in the community, and then less bad things happen. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, yeah, it's smart to make the ladder over with the training because yeah. I think it's really important for law enforcement yeah. to be aware of what it looks like yeah. Yeah, if you're not around it. But um, in the next segment, just to change gears a little yeah. bit, you guys are in a competition <laughs> against Sunny and her husband Manny yeah. and myself and my husband. Yes, we are so ready. <laughs> we. Sunny is, doesn't like to lose. I'm just putting that out there. I am a sore loser. Know, Everyone knows too. it. She, she's too. open about that. Are you guys ever competitive with each other? Oh my gosh. Are we? <laughs> Especially with with football and sports. Yeah. If if my team wins, uh, you know that I'm I'm really a a sore winner. <laughs> You're a gloater. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You're not gonna be a yeah. gloater I'm on the show. You will gloat on the yeah. show. You gotta gloat right. if you win. I mean, no. Oh, well. But good luck, ladies. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Valentine's Day. <laughs> The second season of For Pete's Sake premieres Saturday on OWN. And you know what? I just want to put this out. If you are aware of 
police departments in your area, please find out if they know anything about autism and yeah. please try to connect, yeah. folks. This is really important. Yeah. When we come back, Holly and Rodney go head to head to head against Sarah and Sonny and their husbands. Stay tuned for the Beauty Wade game. They are putting their love to the test against our co-host couples in a heart-pounding edition of the Beulywet Game. That's right, you heard me. Let's meet our contestants. Our first couple's been married for two years, two months, three weeks, and one day. But who's counting? They met online and say it was love at first type. Hey! They have almost a one-year-old boy named Alec and a sweet little chihuahua named Trixie. Give it up for Sarah and Max. Couple number two has been married for 21 and a half years and have four kids. That's too long, okay? <laughs> they first met when a friend set them up. He calls her Boots, which is short for booty. <laughs> and he calls her Honey, which is short for Honey. Do the thing, please. <laughs> so please welcome Holly and Rodney Pete. <laughs> and our third couple has been married for 18 years. But now, um, how they met is up for grabs. Because she says they met in church, and he says at a bagel shop. <laughs> so let's see who's right. Now, they, they love movie and margarita night. Even though the margaritas are why she sleeps through the movie, she says. They live with their two children, two dogs, and her mother. Sounds like the Obamas. <laughs> how isn't that a sitcom yet? Please welcome Sonny and Manny. <laughs> Welcome your host, the lovely and talented game show superstar, Mike Summers. Mark. Nice to see you. Hello, Mike. I forgot this. <laughs> you forgot this? Yeah. Thanks, Joy. So before the show, we asked each couple to give their prediction on how their spouse will answer their questions I'm about to ask. So here's the best part. Each couple competing will be playing for one of the Kiss Cam couples you saw throughout the show for a grand prize that's going to make you fall in love all over again so you guys ready to play yeah all right let's get started here round one's question worth five points and it's for the husbands when your wife says honey they're playing our song <laughs> what song are they playing we're gonna start uh, with max so I would originally have guessed that it would have been our wedding song but I know she doesn't know the title of that song so instead <laughs> I chose this which is actually a commercial that she loves oh, to yeah. sing seriously yeah Toledo you know, and Bonds, yeah, injury attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> for five points, did you get it right? Yes, look at that. That is great. That's fantastic. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's sad. I told you. Yeah, Sam's been good. That is right. so sad. Okay, uh, Rodney, what song? Uh, let me give you a little something. Ah. Uh, I've never been so much <laughs> in love. It's Love Ballad by love LTD ballad. featuring Jeffrey Osborne. Holly? Yes! Five points across the board. All right, Manny, a lot of pressure. What's it the song? Is, it is a lot of pressure. This is our, our wedding song. <coughs> Way You Look Tonight. The Way You Look Tonight. Oh, that's... Oh, nice. Look at that. All right, we have a tie across the board, five, five, five. This time the question is worth <laughs> 10 points. And uh, we're going to the husbands on this one. And you have to get question. them both that right. Yeah. Too easy. yeah, may have been. My husband may be the world's best blank, but he may also be the world's worst blank. Oh. So this was really hard. Uh, <laughs> I hard. struggled with this one, but I chose communicator. Best communicator. And worst sympathizer. Oh, really? Is that wow. And I think it's because I'm always trying to fix things, but not listen and understand what the problem is when when she's talking to me about whatever it is that's bothering her. So you do listen to me. This is nice. I, I do listen, but I try to fix the problem rather than say, oh, honey, I've been there before. Before we go to the divorce court, let's go to Sarah <laughs> and find out. I actually went with something different. I think he might be the world's best dad. Oh, no. Nice. And the world's oh. worst romantic. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh. Man. Happy Valentine's. 
Valentine's Day. Hey, can stone this morning. No points. We got to move on over to uh, Rodney and Holly. So, Rodney, uh, 10 yeah, points. You can yeah. take the lead. Well, this was easy because uh, I'm very involved with my kids. So, I think she would say this. But I also like my junk food and bad food and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm the best father uh -huh. and the worst eater. What do you think? You agree? Oh, no. He's the best hugger and, as you just heard, the worst, worst singer. <laughs> okay, so they don't agree at all. No okay. agreement there. No points. Good. No points for any Sonny and Maddie. I think we might have something in common. <laughs> and uh, she would say that I'm maybe the worst, the best surgeon, but uh, the, the worst, worst singer. singer. For oh. five points, you can take the lead, Sonny. Show when, me your answer. When you bleed, he's most going to be definitely the best, the best surgeon. Yes, but... No, but he's the worst neat person, because oh. you're messy. Oh. Uh, <laughs> can't give you any points on that one. It's yeah. tied five across the board. We have a question now that's worth 25 points. Joy, why don't you ask this one? Okay. So, husbands, where would your wives say is the strangest place you two ever made whoopee? <laughs> Max. So, Watching, you can take the lead. Yeah. 25 points. So, you know, we're actually not too adventurous. We're pretty traditional when it comes to this. So the craziest place that's ever happened. The hot tub. Okay, Is fairly there? normal. The hot tub. Oh, that's oh. disgusting. Did we match up there? That's disgusting. Yeah, 25 points. Good job. Gross. <laughs> All right, Rodney, I can't wait to see your answer. Oh, uh, no, kids are watching. Kids are watching. So I had to go with kid kitchen table. Kitchen table. Oh. Yeah. that we're running out of time because I really want to know that story. Yeah. But, uh, no, Holly, what do you got? I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> airplane. The, oh, the airplane? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh. Is Holly Rollins and Peter a member of the Mile High Club? That's a different story no, for a different show. Oh, no points. No, no, I just Mile High Club. Club. No oh, points. No. we got to move down to Sunny okay, and Manny. Sunny and Manny. Manny, so what, I, for 25 points? I think we have a, uh, On a, gurney. a water sport <laughs> a uh, gurney. thing here. In the swimming pool, what do you think? Oh, good. All right. All right, so we have a tie between Sarah and Max and Sunny and Manny. So Holly and Ron, you got to sit this one out. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, here comes the tiebreaker. Husbands, uh, is your wife a good dancer? So we're going to go to Max first. And if so... What is her go-to dance move? So, Sarah is unquestionably a phenomenal dancer. She is good. She, but she has so many different dances, this one is one of them. But whatever she does, yes. it's the duck face that accompanies her. <laughs> duck face. All right. That's, that's a constant. I think you got that, yes. The duck face. <laughs> Tell me what it is. All right, she's definitely an excellent dancer. And uh, her favorite move is, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but there's a circular kind of windmill type, uh, the wind up. Sonny, can you tie it up? <laughs> hey, look at this. Show me on the card. It's called the Puerto Rican Spin. Yeah, look, she did it. So we have another tie. All right, so folks, we have a tie again. The audience will have to decide how many preferred Sarah's dance move. Let's hear the audience. How many thought Sarah did the best dance move? How many thought Sonny did the best dance move? Sonny. All right, I'm going to say that Sonny and Manny are our winners. And guys, who were you playing for on the kiss cam? Tell us. What is that? Who were you playing for? You guys won. We're Patty and Ryan. <laughs> and spa in the beautiful British Virgin Islands, just steps from the sea. The trip includes all your meals and couples massage in an open-air spa, champagne picnic in a private cabana, and complimentary transfers to and from the airport. Airfare is being provided by the British Virgin Islands Tourism Board. I want to go there. Okay, thanks to Mark Summers and Holly and Rodney Pete for playing along with us. We'll be right back.
You'll be drinking later on. <laughs> Michael Flynn is not feeling the love this morning. He cannot feel the love. He resigned as national security advisor three weeks after the Justice Department <coughs> warned the White House mm -hmm. that he could be vulnerable to blackmail for talking about sanctions with a Russian ambassador. Three weeks ago, mm -hmm. they said, get him out of there. Nobody listened. Mm -hmm. they but fired here's... Him. They with, fired her. Well, but for, they, after three they weeks, fired yeah. yes. they, they fired, fired her. Yeah. Yeah. The person who said, don't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's what, you know, he said about it on Friday. He, <laughs> and he what, who shall be nameless. Yeah. <laughs> and what Kelly and Conway said just yesterday. Take a look. What do you make reports um, that General Flynn had conversations with the Russians about sanctions before you were sworn in? I don't know about it. I haven't seen it. General Flynn does enjoy the full confidence of the president, and this is a big week for General Flynn. Hmm. Yeah, it's a big week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this morning, Kellyanne was all over the place claiming she's not sure when, you know, the guy was notified of this conflict. And right before we went on air, he tweeted, the real story here is why are there so many illegal leaks coming out of Washington? Will these leaks be happening as ideal or North Dakota? <laughs> North Korea. North Dakota. Yeah. I just was being for North Korea. I mean, is he really, is he dodging the real question here? I mean, of course, yeah, I mean of course. remember this guy is yeah. the same guy that started the chant Lock Her Up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Michael and this, Flynn? Yes. Yeah, Michael Flynn yeah. started this. And he's said that and Hillary is a national security threat. Yes, and he also... Now he is. And Obama fired him. Yeah. That's what's fired interesting him. to me. Obama fired him because he was insubordinate, because he failed to follow guidance of his superiors. And so they were on notice that this guy was rogue, that this guy didn't follow... Um, you know, protocol. And so why would you put him in charge of national security? Because he's in bed well, he with the Russians, just like Donald Trump yes. is. That's why. First of all, it has to be. Yeah. Insubordination is really rare in the military because it's all it's all based on rank and file. But one thing he used as an excuse was he used, quote, the fast pace of events. That's why he might have forgotten things. This is someone that's been in war well, zones. to tell people about. Fl Flynn said that the fast pace of events was why he maybe left out the sanctions conversation with Russia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so here's a military. <laughs> he, I mean, he's he's. In war zones, like yeah. fast pace is not a good excuse for you. You might, you, maybe you weren't. But I the love when you, the yeah. shot you just showed about Donald saying, well, "I don't know, I don't know anything about it." I thought he knew more than the generals. He knows everything else. Right? Yeah. Suddenly, yeah. gee, he, what could it be? There's yeah. no way. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no way that he didn't know about it because it wasn't just right. that warns. It was James Clapper. It was John Brennan. Yeah. These be talking about director of national intelligence, CIA director. Everyone went and said, "Look, this could potentially compromise our national That's security right. because this guy may." potentially get bribed and then That's what right. happens Black now Kellyanne yeah. Conway has a responsibility to be informed this is falling on the heels of her having that huge controversy promoting Ivanka's line now mm -hmm. she's out there talking about well I didn't know no you it's your job to know and it's Donald Trump's job to know if there is someone in your administration that could potentially jeopardize our national security that becomes our problem and it's your job to protect That's that right. is your number they, one they job. Must have not, so, so you're saying they knew so if they knew then no way Flynn is just the bad guy no no when when you don't don't vet your people correctly. When you put them in to piss people off, and you know, the, President Bannon Obama. did this. Yeah, President, yeah. Bannon. President Bannon, you know, because he's been trying to get him out of there for a long time, and supposedly President Bannon said, you know, here's your walking papers, get out. Because when you're not, if, if you were the president, 
you wouldn't know what was going on. Because yeah. this is your pick. Right. But since these are not his picks, yeah. these are people picked for him yeah. by President Bannon. So you think President Bannon knew? Oh, hell, hell yeah. yeah. He knew. So hell yeah, he the knew. question, this is the question okay. then really remains, did the Russians hand the presidency to Donald yes! Trump? Yes! Well, that's then, the other okay, question. So I, question. I say it again, I've said it before. Do it over. <laughs> Just do the whole election over. It's not a fair election. It didn't really, it was not correct. Well, Let's yeah. do it again. The, the other issue is why was he, what was that conversation? If he was speaking about sanctions, those sanctions were imposed because President Obama election. was saying there are consequences if you're meddling in our election. Yes. So what was that conversation between Flynn and the ambassador involving our election? It was, and don't worry sanctions. about the That's sanctions. Very, That's very, very alarming. That's, That's right. what it was. Very That's concerning. what it was. You said, Mike Pence didn't know. They threw him under the bus because he was out there defending Flynn. It's horrible. I, I think they. I'm, so, I'm. I believe they're all complicit. Yes, I don't I think, think they Mike Pence. I, I, I believe. Well, I, I don't. Because when you are being told, when you don't, when you're the vice president, and you see that this person is not a smart choice, when you see all the, he's in subordination to the threat. You can't sanction that. Yeah. So he went along with it. And I say this to all those Republicans, this is all on you guys. That's because right. you rushing all these people yeah. through, you don't care, it's going to come back and bite y'all in yeah. the keys. Well, they don't care because while all this is going on, Paul Ryan and the rest of them are slipping through their re their reactionary agenda to unload, to overturn Obamacare. Mm -hmm. to, 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 to,